Natalie Simmons is a TV host currently covering a series titled A Taste of Class that's about the best hidden restaurants in the United States. This particular episode is in preparation for Valentine's. Natalie will be having a taste of Chef Hen's Roulade. It's been said to be the best in the country. When the camera cuts, Brooks and Natalie discuss the just concluded scene and what's supposed to happen in the next. Brooks mentions that Tim wants to see Natalie after they wrap up with shooting. Tim has bad news for Natalie. He's firing her. The ratings for the show have been low, and it can't be fixed with new writers or any of Natalie's suggestions. The audience is complaining that she's become unrelatable, losing her realistic touch and spark. She's getting bored, and it shows on camera. Natalie is fighting a mental breakdown back at the apartment she shares with Brooks, who happens to be her boyfriend. She's using exercise as a distraction and trying to manifest positivity despite the setback. But it's tough, and Brooks' attempt to use ice cream as an added distraction fails because Natalie doesn't like chocolate ice cream, something he should already know. Brooks suggests that she calls her mom as that's bound to make her better. Natalie does call her mom while she's out on a jog. Alicia agrees that Natalie seems like someone else on her shows. She infers that Natalie is hiding from someone named Zach Williams. Natalie rolls her eyes at the name, but her mom insists that Natalie is avoiding Zach at all costs. He's like a forbidden topic. Natalie's mom also nags that Natalie barely comes home. Natalie argues she was home recently, but her mom clarifies it was home that came to her. She uses the opportunity to ask Natalie to come visit. They're having an annual Valentine's Day festival, but Natalie isn't interested. She's got a boyfriend. They won't be together on Valentine's Day though, because he has a shoot. Natalie's mom is working on a painting for the auction. She and Sue, Zach's mother, are part of the festival planning committee. Alicia and Sue aren't as close as they used to be since their children broke up, but they still consider themselves friends. Alicia advises her to come over if she wishes to get back the authenticity she's been lacking. She asks Natalie to come back and face her fears. Zach owns a hardware store, and Eric is taking inventory. Eric brings up Zach's latest blind date, asking if there's going to be a second. Eric's wife, Jess, sets Zach on all these dates but they never blossom into proper romance. Jess isn't angry though and her husband adds that true love isn't easy to find. The couple teases Zach enough that he wants to escape to his studio. Jess playfully remarks that since Zach's an artist, a hopeless romance is probably destined for him. Sue and Alicia are at Steve's diner, planning and organizing the coming event. Alicia mentioned Natalie will be home for a couple of weeks, and she'll be able to assist with the puppy kissing booth she's been having issues with. She's happy Natalie will be home, but she notices Sue looks troubled. Sue initially doesn't want to address it, but Alicia makes her spill. The two mothers are strolling back. Alicia wishes she'd been put in the loop earlier, but Sue explains she's confided Zach's secret in her, something that only he should tell. An idea comes to Sue. It's a plan to possibly get Zach and Natalie back together. They should have never broken up, and Natalie will be around long enough for the scheming mothers to do their thing. Natalie's parents welcome her home. Alicia doesn't joke about Valentine's as it's her favorite time of the year. She's even started decorating. Alicia hands Natalie a list of things she needs to get from the hardware store. Natalie decides she'll attend to the list right away before settling in. She has some phone calls to make all afternoon to tackle her current unemployment status. Alicia tries to get her to at least change into more comfortable clothes before going to the store, but Natalie feels perfectly fine in her current outfit. Natalie heads out and Alicia calls Sue to tell her their plan needs reinforcement because Natalie chose to leave for the hardware store right away, as opposed to waiting till the following day. Zach is hard at work in the studio when he gets a call from Sue. She wants him to come to the store and assist her with an emergency. Zach reasons that Eric could help her, but Sue insists Zach is the only one that can help. Zach sighs and starts to take off his protective gear in preparation to head back out. Eric and Natalie know themselves. In the space of her absence, he's gotten married and he works at the hardware store. As for Natalie, she's not married but she does have a boyfriend and she claims she's doing well. She hands the list to Eric to take a look. Meanwhile, Zach is on the premises. He steps in looking around for his mom and her emergency. Meanwhile, Eric is helping Natalie search and pick out the items on her list. The aisles become like a maze. Both Natalie and Zach keep missing each other. Sue steps on the scene and spots Natalie but doesn't call her attention. Eric tells Natalie how he met Jess. She came to the store with a list and they just clicked. Sue spots her son and beckons on him to follow her while Natalie is already at the cashier, cashing out her items when Sue pretends to run into her. Natalie's surprise at seeing Sue turns into utter shock and discomfort when she sees Zach. Sue offers to give them space. She asks Eric to assist her with her so-called emergency, leaving the former couple alone. 
They exchange pleasantries and discuss why they're in town. Natalie is helping her mom out with the Valentine's festival, but she's surprised to learn Zach isn't visiting town as well. He lives in town. Zach is supposed to have left town to pursue his art career. Instead, he bought and now owns the hardware store. Natalie doesn't know what to say or do. Their conversation is awkward, and Sue pops her head to see how they're doing, still playing innocent. Natalie refuses Zach's hand to help her carry her purchased items to her car. She doesn't even let him help her get the door. Natalie comes home fuming, and her mom acts like nothing is wrong. Natalie is frustrated that Alicia didn't tell her about Zach abandoning his art career for the hardware store. Alicia points out that mentioning it would have only rubbed salt in the wound. Natalie grudgingly agrees. Natalie struggles with addressing the situation and putting it behind her. She keeps telling herself and her mom that she doesn't care, holding back mid-sentence. The revelation is overwhelming, and she wonders why he ventured into a hardware store of all things. She reminds herself that her purpose is to confront and tackle her fears, so they're no longer a burden. She professes that Zack and his shenanigans don't matter because she has someone she's in love with. Alicia begs to differ, and Natalie dials back that it might actually be a deep, like over, actual love. Alicia's grievance is that she hasn't even met this so-called boyfriend, and FaceTime doesn't count. Alicia gets a call from Sue about the auction. It's organized to fund the festival for the following year. Alicia pleads with Natalie to take up the responsibility, and Natalie reluctantly agrees, complaining she hadn't come home to work. Sue and Alicia have a meeting. They announce Natalie as the spearhead for the auction, but she'll need a partner. The partner turns out to be Zach, and he's just as surprised as Natalie. Both children confront their parents separately about the stunt they've just pulled. Alicia infers that Natalie has moved on, so working with Zach should not pose an issue. Plus, it's the perfect opportunity to address her fears. Meanwhile, Sue pretends she had no idea Natalie was volunteering, and it's all just a pleasant coincidence. Jess introduces herself to Natalie. Jess and Eric will be coordinating the sweetheart dance for the festival. She and Eric will be brainstorming at Steve's diner, and she welcomes Sue, Alicia, Natalie, and Zach to join. Sue and Alicia opt out, claiming they have work to do. Eric shows up and Jess realizes he knows Natalie. He codedly tries to reveal they spoke about Natalie previously. The whole situation grows awkward, because Natalie is right there and she knows they're avoiding addressing her as Zach's ex-fiance. It gets worse when Eric claims their car is full so Natalie and Zach will have to share a ride. Natalie and Zach exchange casual conversation, with Natalie downplaying her achievements by saying she's just a small TV host with a director boyfriend. As he helps her with her coat, Zach slips into old habits, playing the gentleman. Natalie gives him a knowing look, half surprised, half expecting this from him. When he reaches to open the door, she steps ahead to do it herself, signaling that they don't need to revert to their old ways. Their conversation in the car remains stilted. Natalie learns Zach is single before she decides they can try to not be so awkward with themselves. Natalie grows visibly uncomfortable with the diner, and Eric and Jess's public display of affection. She excuses herself from the table, and Zach explains Natalie is uncomfortable because of the memories she holds of the diner. They used to visit it frequently back when they were dating. Jess apologizes for not being aware of the situation, prompting Zach to seek out Natalie. When he finds her, she assures him she's fine, but he can tell she's not entirely okay. Zach has a knack for picking up on subtle cues and emotions that others often miss, but Natalie insists he shouldn't worry so much about her. Despite the underlying tension, she is determined to move forward with the auction plans, convinced they can handle the situation like adults. Eric pushes Zach to talk about what went sour between him and Natalie. Meanwhile, Natalie is divulging the whole story to Jess while they put things in place in preparation for the festival. They were engaged, and the plan was to get married and live in Oregon. Just before the wedding, Natalie got a job offer in San Francisco, and Zach got accepted into an art program in Europe. Natalie was willing to forfeit her job to follow Zach to Europe, but he told her art would be his only priority. What hurts is that she comes back, and he's not living off the art that caused their breakup. Instead, he owns a hardware store. It makes Natalie feel like the art program was an excuse to push her out of his life. Natalie is on a call with Brooks. He's at a noisy place, but they talk for a bit. He has no leads on a new job, but he's still on it. Natalie and Zach are at loggerheads about what to do at the auction. Natalie keeps mentioning extreme sports, and Zach tries to make her understand that won't sell. She becomes bitter. He knows what works because he's the one who stayed. At some point, Zach's gentlemanly nature gets in the way, and he mistakenly spills a milkshake on Natalie's coat. She decides to let her anger and irritation simmer down, and then they try to address what to do at the auction. Zach mentions homemade quilts would work, so quilts it is. They go see Addie, 
and she's willing to give away her quilt because she has enough time on her hands to make another one. She remarks that Zack is a sweet guy, and Natalie grudgingly agrees that he's indeed quite thoughtful. On their way back, Natalie is moody. Zack pushes to know what's wrong, and Natalie explodes. She's been avoiding coming home because home reminds her of him and her heartbreak. Now she's back and stuck with him, picking items for the auction. Brooks is too busy to be here with her and everyone keeps gritting her nerves, painting Zack in the best possible light. He's speechless in return. Natalie is not any better by the time Zack drops her home. He asks if they can still work together, and she infers that they have to, because they've only scored one donation item and there's no time left. Brooks sent flowers but Natalie is allergic to lilies. Eager to prove she's moved on, she gushes over the flowers and Brooks's thoughtfulness. Sue is over at Alicia's place. They discuss Natalie currently talking to Brooks. Alicia doesn't like Brooks because he's failed to properly introduce himself, even though he and Natalie have been dating for two years. Natalie rants about Zach to Brooks, and Brooks wonders out loud if the ex is going to cause a rift. Natalie realizes what he means, and mellows down. Their brief conversation establishes that Brooks isn't good with details, and he's always busy. Natalie waves it off and the conversation switches to work. There's no word from Natalie's agent, but Brooks has been finalizing something on the side, and he'll get back to Natalie when he's sure. Sue and Alicia are on edge. Natalie will leave a few days after the festival, and there's been no noticeable improvement between her and Zach. Zach shows up to pick Natalie up for their next auction stop, casually handing her some food he thought she'd like, but she turns it down. He suggests she change into something more practical since the job might get messy, but Natalie brushes off his advice. Sue and Alicia watch from the house. They're still hoping for the best but prepared for the worst. Zach got Natalie carrot cake bread, and she can't resist. He still remembers it's her favorite, even with their time apart. He also apologizes for pointing out earlier that Brooks needs some boyfriend lessons. Natalie notices they're in a barn, and is confused about why Zach has brought them here. Turns out the barn is a treasure hunt, full of aging and dusty antiques according to Sam. Sam gives them space to explore, and both Zach and Natalie find some intriguing items going back hundreds of years. The pair start to loosen up and goof around. Natalie voices they're acting like their old selves, back when they were a couple. She believes she was a better version of herself before she left for San Francisco. Now she's struggling to get back who she truly is. Zach remembers her as ambitious and authentic. She confesses that Zach is a good influence on her, and Zach is happy to hear that. With the tension broken, they get back to goofing around and gathering items. On their way to the car, Natalie has questions about how Zach found the barn and how he got into hardware. Zach conveys that he wasn't making much as an artist so he needed to get more practical. He was working at the hardware store when the former owner asked him to clear out junk from the attic. Zach went there and found treasures instead of junk. Natalie isn't surprised. Zach has always had an artist's eye, seeing beyond the surface level of things. Their moment is interrupted when Natalie gets a text from Brooks and Zach gives her privacy. Zach's parents are with him in his studio, trying to convince him to come clean to Natalie. Zach feels it's already too late for them. Natalie has a new guy, and it seems inconsiderate to bring up the past for no good reason. His parents disagree and argue that there is a good reason. He still loves her. From zero to a hundred real quick. The auction will have several antique items for sale, thanks to Zach and his picking hobby. He takes pride in knowing good barns and storage units scattered around. When Zach and Eric leave, Jess assesses that Zach and Natalie are no longer at each other's throats. Natalie reminds Jess that she has a boyfriend, and Jess wonders if it's a serious relationship. Natalie admits that Brooks ticks some boxes, but she would say they have more of an understanding than love. Zach and Eric return, and then Jess mentions Zach's work is missing from the supplies. Zach feels no one at the auction would want his stuff but Jess states he's downplaying his abilities. Natalie thought Zach gave up art for good, but that isn't the case. He doesn't do art professionally, and Jess suggests Zach takes Natalie to see some of his stuff. Natalie doesn't mind going right away. When they leave, Eric and Jess share a look. Zach and Natalie share a coat under the rain at Zach's studio. Natalie is impressed by what she sees, and she's glad that he found a way to feed his passion. Seeing his work, Natalie agrees with Jess that Zach is good and his stuff will sell at the auction. She picks a favorite, a blacksmith work that reminds her of Mount Kilimanjaro. They'd talked about climbing it together. Zach reveals that memory was on his mind when he made the art. Natalie also remembers the first gift Zach ever gave her. It was a mug with a quote. Natalie still doesn't get why Zach gave up his art. She believed he was going to make it and it feels like he gave up too easily and succumbed to reality and practicality. Valentine's Day Festival is here. Natalie and Zach have successfully built a kissing booth. She misses small town life, but she also misses her job. 
Zach has seen her show and admires her on it. Natalie reveals she's unemployed. She didn't mention it earlier because it would make her look bad, coupled with her being away from home for a long time. Zach wants to know why she lost her job so she explains she lost herself. She chased fame and status and got lost in it. She burned out trying to please her audience and fit their aesthetic. She wanted to be perfect for them. Zach says he can relate to wanting people to see him in a certain way. There's something that Zach needs to get off his chest and he starts to say it when Eric interrupts, because there's a problem. When they get back to the storage unit, they see that the roof has a leak. A lot of the auction items were damaged by the rain. Now, they'll have to scrape together enough money from whatever's still in good shape. Sue's not trying to stress them out, but she mentions that next year's festival kind of depends on this auction. Seems everyone knows Natalie except Brooks. Her father finds her on a secluded trail she's always come to whenever she needs to collect her thoughts. Natalie isn't happy about the auction setback and being unemployed. Her dad gives her a pep talk. She's been resilient since she was young even with setbacks. Sure, she'd get sad at first, but she always bounced back. The trip down memory lane brings up Zach because he's always been an essential part of Natalie's life. She's confused about what he stands for now and her dad advises she could give him a second chance and find out. A crowd turns up for the day and the venue is buzzing with several activities. Zach finds Natalie at the puppy kissing booth and gets a kiss from a puppy. Everyone is gathered for the auction. Natalie and Zach start with the quilt made by Miss Addie. It takes a moment, but Natalie brings her tactics from her time as TV host. Zach might be nervous, but he's an information expert, and soon enough, he gives the audience interesting facts about the quilt that the right person could relate to. They start the bid at $50 and get an interested buyer. The quilt goes to a couple at a bid of $100. The sweetheart dance turns out lovely. Natalie and Zach acknowledge Jess and Eric's hard work. The married couple feels Zach and Natalie are the real superstars. The auction went well despite the setback. They doubled the previous year's take. Natalie's just grateful that Sue and Alicia are happy. Plus, funding won't hinder next year's festival. Eric and Jess step away to share a dance, leaving Natalie and Zach to do the same. As they sway close, the moment feels charged, something unspoken lingering between them. Miss Addie makes a passing comment about them looking like a cute pair, lightening the mood for a second. Then Zach drops a confession. He never went to art school. Natalie pulls back from him, stunned, the disbelief clear in her expression. Zach never even sent in the application because he didn't want to leave home. When Natalie got her job, he decided not to be a hindrance. He felt rooted to home, but he wasn't planning to tie her down. Natalie is crushed by his confession and runs out of the building. Zach runs after her, adamant about explaining further. He asserts it wasn't because he didn't love her, but Natalie feels he's lying to himself. She believes he made his decision out of fear. Brooks shows up just then to Natalie's surprise. He's gotten her an interview and has booked a flight. They'll leave in the morning. He prides himself that he's delivering the news in person and wishes her a happy Valentine's Day. Brooks finally meets the parents and comments they're lovely people. Natalie is excited about this possible new job and asks for details. She expresses that Brooks coming in person to deliver the news is a very romantic gesture, but he dashes her hope by revealing that he came out of mere convenience rather than a grand thought. Her town just happened to be nearby. Alicia might have finally met Brooks, but she's still wary of him. She introduces him as the boyfriend when Sue asks who he is. Meanwhile, Zach stealthily leaves the festival after throwing longing stares. While Zach is helping clean up the aftermath of the festival, Eric advises him not to make the same mistake twice. Natalie is packing. She's still upset that Zach lied to her. Jess suggests she take a bit of time to think, but Natalie wants to focus on securing the new job. She also believes that she shouldn't be willing to take a chance on a guy who couldn't take a chance on her, convincing herself that Brooks gives her clearer signals. Still, she asks her father for his advice, and he opines that whatever decision she makes is up to her. Brooks interrupts because they have to get going. Zach shows up just in time to give Natalie a gift. He starts to say what's on his mind, but is cut short when Brooks appears at Natalie's side. Zach introduces himself to Brooks, and Brooks calls him a nice guy when he's out of earshot. While waiting for the flight, Natalie decides to open the letter that came with the gift. As she reads, she gets a bit emotional, trying to keep it together. It makes her curious enough to unwrap the gift too, revealing the Mount Kilimanjaro piece from Zach's collection. Brooks is sitting right there, but doesn't seem to notice anything, barely paying attention to what her ex sent or how it's affecting her. He's completely unaware of the emotions she's trying to push down. Natalie has her meeting. The man in charge wants the opposite of what Natalie went home to build authenticity. He wants the lost Natalie, ideal, perfect, and ready to take on a load of work. 
Natalie wasn't comfortable with the deal, so she took a bold step and laid down her terms. She barely says the full story, before Brooks berates her for blowing up a good opportunity for a fairy tale wish to be herself. The thing is that Lowenstein was willing to do things her way. Natalie is now in her feelings and asks Brooks a series of questions that persuade her he doesn't know her or what she likes. Brooks realizes that Natalie is breaking up with him. She rushes out with her bags to catch the next flight to Oregon. She booked online, but she's running late. The airline staff has just closed the gate and offered to book her on the next available flight. Natalie insists it has to be that flight. She desperately explains her plight in detail to the staff. What she doesn't know is that Zach is right behind her. He came all the way. The staff prompts Natalie to turn around, and she sees Zach. He took Eric's advice and decided he wasn't going to let Natalie slip away a second time. He asks her to be his valentines, and Natalie answers him with a kiss. Zach and Natalie start a show together, involving treasure hunting in places like barns. The show is hilarious and packed with chemistry. Zach has also started selling more of his work. Jess is curious as to how Sue and Alicia knew Zach and Natalie were meant to be. The women reply they've simply done the work of a mother.